but it's 50-50 split, male and female. It's never been done before and I think it's going to be absolutely iconic. It's some of the biggest names in motorsport, so the level of competition is going to be insane. Extreme. We're in quarantine, um, we're here for a couple of days um, in a hotel room. I've got a balcony which is so nice, we've been doing some skipping outside, trying to keep me entertained. Um, yeah, we've got a few days in quarantine. Um, yeah, I've just been kind of looking at track maps, um, chatting with Timmy, reminding ourselves about the car, um, so that we can do as much as we can really before we uh, get to the event, because I'm sure it will all come around pretty quickly during race week. So. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Our, our pace has dropped a lot. I feel like our stamina is dropping and it's just kind of uh, forgetting what day it is now. And then all of a sudden we're going to be out into the madness of it, um, flat out. So trying to just chill out a bit, get some rest and then uh, look forward to a really busy week coming up. And first we're going to the boat, which is going to be so cool to go and see uh, the turtles um, and their habitats and try and do some good work in the legacy programme. Be on the way, Timmy! Yeah, not driving now. We made it! We've literally just boarded the St. Helena. Wow. What a ship. Right, waiting to find out who my roomie's gonna be. Here it is. Here's a little look. Pretty snug in here. I'm really excited because we've got our first of our science talks tonight. Um, we're sailing over overnight to this beach, which is one of the largest hatching grounds for turtles in the Red Sea. So tomorrow, nice and early, we're gonna be doing some conservation work there. Reminder that in 10 minutes time at 7pm, we have our workshop session number one, which is about climate change solutions in the Tintin Lounge on a deck forward. <laughs> Waking up on a boat. I literally can't remember the last time I slept on a boat. It's 6 a.m. and I've just woken up to this view. Feeling so lucky to be able to do all of these um, adventures um, as well as the racing, so I couldn't sleep. <laughs> just so excited to be here and there. Uh, yeah, I've never seen a turtle beach before, so to go and see what that looks like is going to be a real life experience for me. morning on board the St Helena and today we're off we're going over to one of the beaches which is one of the largest hatchings um, of turtles on the Red Sea so I'm super excited to go and experience this we're doing some conservation work today we've got some more talks from the scientists that we really learn and understand what is going on with our climate and how we can all have a direct impact and then of course we're going racing but this is a really exciting part of it you kind of feel like you're on holiday I was saying to Timmy it's gonna be a bit of a shock when we turn up to the racetrack for the track walk tomorrow because we're all kind of on this amazing boat walking around in flip-flops in the sun and having a great time with all the other teams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you excited, Molly? Very. What are we going to do? Get really wet in a second. <laughs> I'm going to put you up in front of I'm going to save the turtles. Yeah. Super 
interesting to see because the little nests, the little dips that you have, they're the, the nests from last year, so that's where the turtles hatched last year. And in about a month's time, the turtles will come in from the Red Sea, climb up the beach, only about 150 meters. And actually here, this beach is protected by this wall, so this is a concrete factory. But the turtles climb up it and then they stop before they get to the wall and turn around and come back, protecting them going up into the kind of civilization and uh, being killed. So it's nice that they hatch there and then the baby turtles when they're born, they have to sprint down the beach. About 30 seconds it takes them, but apparently it's the most important 30 seconds of their lives. Uh, if they make it, they get about 100 years in the sea, but if they don't, then uh, obviously they get eaten by the seabirds and stuff like that. Apparently this is one of the best areas for preserving the turtle populations and that's because it's got really good seagrass so what they eat has got a really diverse culture and a lot of it so they kind of put GPS's on these turtles and they, they map them and saw them swimming around this area and they come here to eat but then obviously it makes it easy when they nest because when they come to nest they're here for about five or four or five months so it makes sense that they come where it's easy to get food, build their nests, hatch their eggs. So we're here doing some work, super interesting stuff. I didn't realise turtles once they're hatched they swim out to the sea go around for about 30 years and then after 30 years they get the sense to come home so they land within 150 meters of where they were born on this beach which is why it's super important to preserve the areas that turtles live because if you're to build a house or a hotel on it they can't sense the difference so they'll still try and hatch there so it's really interesting that you kind of have to protect the local area for them to to replenish the populations and then they come back every five years for their nesting season, which is about four or five months. But apparently, if we can regenerate this area, so clean the plastic up on the beach, educate the locals, provide infrastructure to stop people from driving on the beach, the entire turtle population in the Indian Ocean, not just the Red Ocean, so super important work that we're doing. We've got some amazing scientists leading the research out. That's why if this beach gets destroyed, then we will not have as many turtles, so we need to help them out. Do, you have a, do they have a better sense of direction than you? <laughs> <laughs> they have a better sense of direction than me. <laughs> hey, there's the turtle! Oh, yeah, but are they what? big? Aren't they they this is green. Yeah, but they're tiny when they're born, aren't they? They're like, what? Oh, yeah, Where's the turtle? <laughs> we have a bear. <laughs> There's going to be short term and long term fixes here, so in short term, anything that hatches, like it's an endangered place up there or it's around some rocks where it could be dangerous for the turtles to fall, they're going to remove it from the surroundings and put it in a hatching um, kind of habitat and then when it's ready and it's incubated they're going to put it back onto the beach into the same location let it out and then in the long term they're going to be building a gentle slope up here for the turtles so it's safe for the babies to run back down. They're going to be planting mangroves in this area mangroves apparently can raise the uh, kind of surface of the ocean floor by three millimeters a year um, and with the rising sea levels it actually means that turtles are losing a lot of this beach every year it's coming inland so they're having less and less room to lay their eggs on so it's getting more dangerous if they're going up into the rocky environment so planting the mangrove trees along here will be a bit of a buffer protect the beach a bit more so that we're kind of slowing down the effects of the rising sea levels but five years worth of programs that are extremely putting into this so it's really cool to see that I didn't realise that but it's a lot of investment going in with the local community and some universities and it's going to be the first time ever mangroves planted in this way to act like a buffer to preserve the habitat for the sea turtles where they hatch and that's been done by leading coastline engineers at universities and had two years of research into that so super interesting and obviously clear in the beach as we go
having a look at the course after we've done it. How are you feeling for tomorrow, Timmy? Feeling good. We've done everything we can up until now. Yeah. Just gonna go out on track from now on. See how we do. Shake down tomorrow. Look at that sunset. Just arrived on site. Shaking down the car this morning. One of us will go in the morning, one of us will go in the afternoon. We got one lap of the course to kind of see where we're going a bit. It was tricky on the recce yesterday because even with the kind of normal standard four by four car, we couldn't get up the drops um, and the steep hills. So we had to walk up them, which is interesting. So it'll be cool to see what it's actually like in real life today. Have some fun and uh, get ready for qualifying tomorrow. This is our car, the electric policy. <laughs> I'm going to be on BBC Breakfast Live with Jensen Button in a minute. We'll shake down one this morning. I'm joined now by Katie Munnings of Andretti United. Katie, impressively finished, but not without difficulty. Walk us through what happened. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think, well, we, we obviously had a slow puncher. Um, and it, by the time we kind of, it was in the pit lane. And uh, Continental, my mechanic, said they heard it um, as I was pulling out, so it was too late to do anything. Um, didn't feel too bad when, when I was driving, you know, it's slippery, so it's very hard to pick up these things. It was just dropping slowly. Um, and then sort of just in, at the end of the first sector, um, I just, you know, I went over a crest and the rear just snapped. And it, from then it was just, you know, on the rim the whole way back. Um, I thought in that moment every second counts, so I tried to drive as fast as I could, but still pretty sketchy going over the top of the crest when you're sideways like that. Um, trying to bring it home but yeah anything can happen we're seeing a dramatic race today so hoping for a better qualifying too i'm really happy i'm really happy you know we started with a puncture and we thought on qualifying one this might be it for the weekend you know and to have made it to the final now is like yes go team you Exhausted now, <laughs> but we worked hard. Worked really hard. Breezy happy? Yeah, we're okay. All okay. Man, a few words. <laughs> <laughs> He's done some magic behind the scenes. He has. We can't tell you because there's still four more races to go and it's all top <laughs> secret. <laughs> Mechanics are all cleaning the car up. <laughs> Having a great time. <laughs> they won't see the car until we're in Senegal. Oh. All the team's packing up, put the cars back on the ship, and set sail for Senegal. So it's the end of the race here in Alilla. Feels like an absolutely crazy day. Um, I haven't had a second yet to take it in. I'm so happy to finish on the podium with P2 um, after the week that we've had, you know, with the qualifying and the puncher. Um, we really wouldn't have imagined that we could have been here. Uh, we had some issues in, in qualifying too, but then in semi-final one and, and the final today, things completely turned around for us. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Timmy did such a good job on the start. 
Now I'm just taking it in the desert before we head home. Start getting ready for Senegal. What are we? We're so happy.